Hey there, thanks for being here. Welcome to the Blue Sky Sanctuary. That's my property in the Baja in Mexico. It's also my YouTube channel where I've been sharing all sorts of good stuff. And today I'm happy to be revisiting a topic that I made a video about before, which is living on solar power. At the time, I wasn't really loving it. I was in my camper, I had a pretty small system, and it wasn't really well installed. And now that I've been in my house with a much bigger, better system that was really well installed, I have a much different opinion to share with you. So I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna to revisit all of the points that I made in that last video and give my new perspective on those points. So first, I'm going to show you what my current system looks like, and on the other side of that, I will share with you the different cost of the two systems, and then the pros and cons, and the reality of it all, and where we are going from here. We built this little storage space to um, protect all the solar equipment, and that is all its running parts up there, and the big piece is this lithium ion battery. These are the solar panels. I chose this footage of me cleaning them to give you perspective of their size. And this is the solar charge controller. The green box in the upper right tells us how much energy is being used. In the yellow is how much energy the panels are generating. And in the blue is how much stored energy is in the battery. Okay, so that's my beloved system that's running the house right now. And to give you the perspective of what I was using before, the system that's on the camper is three panels, 160 watts each. I have a lot of notes today because I don't know all these numbers off the top of my head. Two sealed lead acid batteries, those are 12 volt each, and then the solar charge controller and the inverter. On my current house system, there are four 475 watt panels, one kick-ass lithium ion battery, that's 48 volt, and then the charge controller and the inverter and a few other components that make the whole system run perfect. And the cost difference on those two systems are roughly, the first, the camper system was roughly 1700 US dollars and the system for the house was roughly 11,000 US dollars. And so obviously a massive price difference, but a massive difference in experience and available energy and enjoyment of life every day. So jumping right into the points from my last video, the number one complaint that I had was this feeling of living on a finite amount of energy. And that's in part because of the lead acid battery technology and the fact that they can only discharge to 50%. And if you wanna know more about that, you can go check out that other video because I rant about the experience extensively in that video. But um, now I have the completely opposite experience. No word of a lie, I feel now like I have more energy than I need. I don't just feel that way, that's the reality. I have more energy than I need here every day, as long as the sun's shining. After the sun sets, it's a slightly different experience. I'm not trying to um, run my air conditioner for two hours after the sun sets. I'm conscious of my energy consumption. But in the day, I run my one ton air conditioner. Um, I have, what is it? Yeah, one ton, it's 110 volt. Uh, mini split AC unit that's in my bedroom. I run it even when I don't need it in part because you can never have a bedroom that's too cool to sleep in. It's just always nice to have it cool in there and also because it creates water. So that's being captured outside and it's being used to water the plants and it's just incredible to be running AC basically for free. A second point from that last video was it's expensive to expand your unit. And yes, that's true. Upfront solar isn't cheap. 11,000 US dollars is not a small amount, but it does feel worth it. Uh, there have been power outages in town and I didn't even know. I'm just carrying on my merry way here. I still have everything that I need. It's been incredible. Um, so the cost upfront, you can't get around that. It's not cheap, but it's just that age old saying, you know, we get what we pay for and that's what I'm experiencing. The third point was cloudy days. It significantly impacted the energy that I had when I was living in the camper. That is not the experience that I have now. This solar system fills the battery to 100% even on cloudy days. It takes a little bit longer, but it fills all the way. So again, you get what you pay for. This system is just awesome. And so I'm not experiencing that 
uh, feeling of lack when there's cloudy days. Number four was, uh, it was, it felt very far from hurricane proof. The reason I said that is because one of my panels blew off my camper when we had a storm here and the panels aren't cheap. So that basically was, of course, because of the less than ideal installation that I mentioned. Also on the topic of that less than ideal installation, uh, that previous company installed the solar charge controller, which you want to look at all day, every day, down beneath and beside the toilet. I'll put a picture of it here for you so you can see, because that was the easiest place for them to put it. Now my charge controller is in my kitchen above the counter. It's like at eye level. It's so easy to access and to see. And I love looking at it because it's almost always giving me a pleasant surprise. It's also much easier to read than the charge controller that is connected with lead acid batteries because again, that 50% discharge thing messes with the numbers that you see on your charge controller where this charge controller, the numbers that I see is exactly what's available. If you're getting solar, make sure your charge controller is somewhere really easily accessible. Okay, so before I change it too far to finish my point of the systems being hurricane proof, the way that this house system has been installed and the way the panels are connected to the roof, I feel really confident that when the hurricanes come, those panels aren't gonna go anywhere. Number five was that I didn't feel as independent as I thought that I would or as I wanted to be. That's because I had an issue with that system on the camper at one point in time and I just didn't have any power. It happened on a Friday night. It took till the Monday for the company to come out and service things and it turned out it was a fuse issue. And I just felt at the mercy of the company that installed it for me where here, this system hasn't had any problems. So I guess I can't safely say how that's gonna be handled if or when the time comes, but so far so good, I haven't had any issues and I feel completely independent. Number six was that you have vulnerable assets sitting outside and I didn't love that. That's again, the feeling of my panel getting blown off the roof, which isn't gonna happen here. It also was in reference to thieves potentially taking these very valuable assets um, out of your property if you're not around. But since this system is worth $11,000, we went the extra mile to make sure that the assets are secure. And so as you saw in the picture, we built a little house for the battery and those components. And they are in there locked metal gates, really well built and the, the panels on the roof aren't going anywhere either. And um, so I don't have that feeling anymore. Lastly was the environmental impact of solar. I wasn't sure, and based on the research that I did at that time, I wasn't sure that uh, solar power was that much more friendly than whatever is feeding the grid um, because the grid feeds so many people and with solar you're so individual so you have to get all these components to um, power yourself. But since then I've done some more research and this is just for myself, where I'm living in this piece of paradise in Mexico. The grid is powered by diesel. So the diesel comes on a ship and then it goes into the factory and they burn it in La Paz, which is a city about an hour north of where I am. And so of course that's having a negative impact on the air quality of that city and the surrounding areas. So when I compare burning diesel every day to the panels and the components of the solar system going into the landfill in 30 years, which would I rather? Right now, I would rather put these components in a landfill in 30 years. So my opinion on that has changed. And another consideration that I've had since I made that last video is that I would rather leave the grid power for the locals because the grid power is relatively inexpensive. So I would love for people like me who are moving here from other countries to get solar if at all possible. In closing, uh, I would say the grid is 
coming really close to me, but I don't anticipate connecting to it because I am loving living off grid and I want to inspire more people to do that. And on that note, I am going to be opening the sanctuary for people to come stay here and learn about off-grid living. I'm also a certified yoga teacher and meditation practitioner and can facilitate a retreat of some sort for you. It will be an Airbnb experience. You'll find it on there getting closer to the fall of 2024. But if in the meantime, you want to contact me and know more about that, just hit me up in the comments or my email is in the description and we'll get the ball rolling. So that's it for now. Thanks again for being here. And I hope to see you again on the next video. Bye for now.